Davis, Anastasia Richardson. I was born being told I had a future. There's not enough I did for because what I was told I could get a job, I could go to university, I could make plates for myself. Now today with all these cuts, young people are finding out what most of you already know, the government lies. Today young people are being forced to pay for a crisis we didn't create, by a government that we didn't vote for, many of us not even having the right to vote. Young women are a special target of the government's vitriol. The government moralizes over how young girls are over-sexualized when Nadine Dory is trying to tell young women to just say no. Meanwhile, sexual health services, teenage pregnancy services and rape crisis centers are being cut, giving young women even fewer options. And the work young women do as unpaid carers goes unnoticed. The government points the finger of blame at young people in poor areas while simultaneously cutting um, while simultaneously employing anti-abortion organizations as its advisors, cutting the EMA benefits and tuition fees which we had relied on to bring us out of the poverty which makes us more vulnerable. With one million women seeking work, including one in five 20, 16 to 24 year olds, the government dares to tell us that what we need at this point is more self-respect. The government found it easy to blame the riots on an alleged breakdown of the family, again blaming single mothers, and on the stereotype of the violent young men living in this supposed culture of entitlement. But it was their cuts which created the poverty and hopelessness in areas where youth unemployment reaches 40%, where one in four youth services are facing catastrophic cuts three times higher than the general level of council cuts, with 3,000 youth worker jobs lost. Meanwhile, the police disproportionately target young people of colour, who are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people. And yet, the fact that there's only a 6.7% conviction rate for rape shows us where the justice system's priorities really lie. Rather than taking responsibility for the cuts and poverty which created the riots, the government's response was to further criminalise young people and further reduce their life chances. How dare the government force us to pay for the crisis it has caused? They're taking our future away while telling us that we haven't worked hard enough for it. In the midst of a massive crisis of cuts and poverty, all the government seems to care about is how our families are broken and how we supposedly don't respect ourselves enough. Last June, we had a slight walk through London to protest this victim-blaming attitude, bringing together rape survivors, including asylum seekers and sex workers, all of whom opposed the cuts. We're planning a slat walk in 2012 and have a fundraiser next Friday. The government's big society policy is turning against it. We're your big society, we're right here, and we won't stand for these lies which you're using to excuse the poverty. The General March for Jobs has received huge support from the Communication and Workers' Union both nationally and from ordinary members up and down the country. General Secretary Billy A. 